one. Now up to the, to the next chapter, 104 physics. Uh, the ball we just added obviously was a kinematic ball, so we had no rigid body attached to this. And uh, if we want to have um, unity physics applied here, then we need to do it a bit different. And with physics, there comes the second problem that um, the actual authority lies with the server and all collisions and everything the physics engine is calculating is done on the server while the client might already be ahead uh, with, the, with the calculation, so uh, several frames ahead. And uh, if only the server calculates uh, physics collisions and, and things, then this will lead to some weird behavior on the client side. So to prevent this, one can also do a physics prediction on the client, then the client will do its own physics calculation, which is much nearer to um, what a user might expect. And this actually sounds not that complicated, but as the, the documentation mentions, client prediction for physics is quite a expensive uh, operation, so it will put some pressure on the client because the simulation must be run multiple times per ticks, and uh, so it's a kind of a trade-off um, with um, CPU time and accuracy of the physics simulation. To turn on this client side physics prediction mode, uh, you have to go to the Fusion menu here on top, uh, click on the Network Project Configuration, and in the configuration set settings, there is a physics engine, and here the physics server, whatever the M is here, uh, must be set to client prediction. This will change the behavior of all the physics uh, predicted in the in the um, application, and this will enable client prediction again at the price of higher CPU load on the client. What we will do now is we will add the possibility to uh, shoot with the second mouse button to shoot uh, physics controlled balls as opposed to our kinematic balls from the last lessons. And this is actually easier to implement than the kinematics because the physics engine will do most of the work. So to start here, we add a new game object. So rup, 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 apply, uh, didn't save, sorry. Uh, we create a new game object and call this one a physics ball, physics ball. And I call it a prefab, a prefab, prefab. And um, again, this will be network control. So we need to add the network object to get this one an identity. And then instead of adding the network transform, which would be used for the kinematic uh, animation and only synchronizes the transform, which was calculated uh, on the server side, we now adding a network rigid body rigid body, rigid body, like so. And uh, what this does is uh, it adds the physics engine like it does with you adding a rigid body. So it automatically added a rigid body uh, locally and this also added the network rigid body. And uh, this will allow the Unity physics engine to calculate um, precisions and collisions and all this. All right. Next thing, let me have a look, is obviously we need to add, to add the change interpolation data source to predict it and set it to world space. Again, okay, we want to have prediction and the world space. And then we need to add, add our sphere as in the last one. So we create a 3D object called sphere and call it the ball sphere again. Uh, make it a bit smaller like so. We doing this again, the same size as the last one, 002. Uh, whoa, I uh, didn't, sorry, I, I remove it again. I will first change the transform here. Transform, reset the transform, it's easier. Uh, 3D object, sphere, now it looks better. 02, 02, 02, 02. And uh, potentially we get this a second color, so we create a material Material this physics ball this one without the eye, sorry, physics uh, like this, and uh, give it a color of which could be visible, some bluish thing here, like so. Bam. 
and the sphere now will become blue, like so. Looks nice. And um, so we have to drag our sphere to the interpolation target so that this warning goes away. And then we remove again the collider from the sphere and add it instead. Remove there's that to the prefab here. Add a component, a sphere collider, sphere, sphere collider, and make this a bit smaller. Again, 0 0.1 should work fine. And this should be it. Then we add a little script like physics ball, a new script here. And this should be it from the editor side. So we can drag this one to the assets folder. And it's here and save and we remove it. And now we are good to go with the little scripting part. As already mentioned, the physics implementation is easier than the ball implementation, to, and this was already quite simple. So uh, we do not need to have a transform here. We only need to despawn uh, if something happens. So what we will be doing here is we uh, again remove this. We change this to a network behavior. I will this do. I will do this manually uh, because I think it's the better way to to learn about things than to just copy and paste things. So uh, obviously I could not just copy over the network, the ball script and, and uh, do it like this, but I want to do it one more time. So we need to have our despawn timer again. So our private tick timer, life with property like so. Then we want to have our init function, which will be called from the spawning and we give this one a forward, sorry, this is a void, a void in it, and we will give this a vector three, the forward direction where we want to move, because this will be done by the physics engine, like so. And um, in this one, we, we set the despawn timer, so tick, uh, Five uh, equals sorry equals tick timer from seconds on our runner with a second of five seconds or so five seconds despawn time and we get our component rigid body in our physical ball and we are just setting the velocity to the forward vector which was passed in the init and this one we will call from the player in a second uh, vector three forward where is the problem equals for a uh, four forward okay like so and then we need to despawn so this is done the only thing which is done in the in the update or in this case our fixed update fixed update network component we will just do one thing if life pong expired, if your life is expired, then the runner we will despawn ourselves, and that's it. This is the whole physics ball implementation. Then we need to get the input. So once again, network input data. We have a second constant which is then called the mouse button two. And obviously we give it a second to the two, to the, the, the bit two on the, on the buttons. No need to change anything here. And then inside the spawner uh, where the input is handled, we can do the same thing. So we will have to get our, in our update, we will uh, add a mouse button one. And button one is sorry um, bam, 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 bam. one one mouse button one uh, not two one one like so not two bam so like this so we capture the status of the mouse button one and two inside the update function and then we need to handle it here 
and um, obviously the very same thing. So if this one is set, then we set this one, so the second bit of this button, and afterwards we reset it again. And this should handle our input fine. So this is on the basic spawner. And um, last thing, the actual spawning happens in the player script. So uh, right here, we need to have a second prefab. So we need to have a physics ball, physics, physics. And uh, we call this one uh, prefab this is uh, so a X ball like so. And this needs to be set then. Mustn't forget, remember me please. And um, yeah, finally we need to add uh, the, the handling. So uh, whoop, whoop, whoop. this is done here. So we need to do something similar here um, as we did uh, here. So uh, here we question if the, the left mouse button is clicked. And funny enough, in the sample code, they're doing an else if. So you cannot spawn both at the same time. So uh, this is basically done here. So else and data dot buttons and network network data network input data dot mouse button two and the second one here like so. So in case the second mouse button is pressed, uh, else if, um, then we are basically doing the very same thing. Just have give me a let me have a look. Yep, this looks very very similar to the one above. So maybe not the best code. Oh, the else is at the wrong position. I just see this chuck must be must go here. And uh, we are basically doing almost the same thing. So this is exactly the same. So we're creating our delay timer. So also this one is only possible every half a second. And then we spawn this time. We spawn the physics ball. Prefab physics ball. Um, transform position. This is the new position plus equals forward. And the quaternation is also the same. And the only difference is that now we are getting the physics. Physics. There it is, physics ball component. And this, the init of this one needs the forward vector, which uh, happens to be our forward vector, but a bit faster. So we making it 10 times because this will be slowed down by the physics engine and this should basically be it this is a too much and uh, with this we are basically done so this will uh, spawn our physics controls and um, client predicted balls which then should run nicely over our plane and drop below behind the plane so let's check it out ah no before we check it out, this time I remembered it. I we have to move here, and uh, okay, didn't save anything, everything. So save this and go away. Oh, okay, and now we go to our player prefab out here, and here we need to add our physics ball prefab. Ah, and the material. <laughs> okay, we should sort this at one point. Okay, and now this should be done, and we will test it in a minute. 
Okay, let's check it. So we will build. version and we will start two instances as always one instance and the second instance move them right here one is the host the second is the client and once they have spawned here we go we should be able to move yeah this is the first one ah! <laughs> i didn't want to kill you sorry and this is the second one ah look at this this is a nice little maybe we should make this the plane a bit bigger but obviously physics engine is working and it's simulating and yeah it's not easy to see but they should be well synchronized both sides yeah so just to make it a bit easier to see we increase our floor size to let's say 100 by 100 so the floor is a bit bigger build one more time bam, bam, bam. and start it and start a second time move it so again our big floor host join join and see how far oh I already spawned Ching, ching, ching. Why did this one jump? That's funny. So this is the old one. Whoa! And the new one is ding, 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 ding. And uh, no, 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 Get you. I want to get you like this. Ooh, didn't. <laughs> okay. But it's working and we can go to the next section.